All right, folks. Uh, it is spring, and it is sprung, and we're getting ready to get busy. Tommy Coward here on the lawn with you guys, and it is spring again. And just want to show you, before we head out for our t daily project, something that splashes and blooms in the early spring here at the Brant Ridge Ranch are these irises. They are so beautiful. Little urn action going on here too. And then these, the signature growing green. And uh, we just had a storm last night. See the debris in the street, I just blew that out. But these guys, they're short-lived. They are short-lived. It's too bad, they go for about two weeks and that's it. But anyway, that little red bud plant. I have to take that tree out and I got some asparagus going here. But uh, folks, we're getting ready to go do a shade landscape in front of a house. It's a foundation planting for shade and see how it goes. We've got some shade loving plants going in. We'll be doing that for a couple of uh, days. All right, folks, Tommy Cowett, bear with us. All right, folks, Tommy Cowett here returning to a project that we did about two years ago here on this hillside planting, if any of you recall that video, and caught more criticism because of the way we killed the weeds that were here. We used a product from Monsanto. Turned out to be very unpopular, but going back, the goal was, was to eliminate having to mow or maintain this steep, steep hillside. So if you recall going back the juniper, the sergeants, the burning bush, the cripsi, <coughs> cypress, the abelia, um, different types, uh, basic, and then the miscanthus plants. But hey, the customers actually called me back to do another project, which if you can see, the wall and everything up there on the front of the house, and we're getting ready to go up there and do it but I just want to show you what we had here before and uh, basically just a lot of weeds growing on this hill very dangerous to mow Jack and Linda didn't want to have to do that he'd roll that mower down that hill can't have that but that's what it's like now two years later it's growing in it's not completely there but that's the project we did now we're gonna work on a new one alright folks let's get started all right, folks, so here's the area, and it's the front of the house. <clears throat> God, the pollen is terrible today. Down along this wall, we've got a design, and I'll show you that. I've already started to take up some of this fabric, and if you've seen some of my videos, I'm not a big fan of this fabric. There's no purpose for it. We're going to rototill the soil up, condition it. First thing we got to do is take out these big hollies. A beautiful Japanese maple tree here. Do a little pruning on it. The Lakothi's coming out. They want to keep the Nandina. We've got a couple of uh, rhododendrons here. Look at this rhodi. That's gorgeous. Rhododendron. The Zaleas bloom. We'll prune them back a little bit. The Opon Holly. We got an Inkberry. We have a Laura Petalum. And we got a Cleara Japonica. That we're just going to prune these guys up. They've gotten a little overgrown. And then the design we have, there's a red twig dogwood. The design we have will be basically a shade planting. And I'll show you that design here in a little bit. But let's get started trying to get rid of this fabric first. And then we'll start uh, eradicating or removing these guys. All right, folks, bear with us. All right, so my methodology for ripping out these big shrubs is so simple. Use a reciprocating saw to sever the roots. And that's only like a six inch blade, so I'll basically cut around. I've had many videos where I do this. Cut around, then pop it out with the king of spades. Right manufacturing king. So, folks, it's simple. That took me five minutes or less to rip that guy out. Now I'll just knock the dirt off of it and we'll be hauling it away. 
All right, folks. Well, would it be too crazy to say this is a new species of plant here? Root shrub. And basically, I just flipped them upside down. This is sort of what they have on display at Paul Senior Botanical Garden, one of our customers. They've got a few trees over there upside down. I'm going to have to get by there and videotape it for this. But, hey, not too far-fetched. That could work somewhere. All right, folks, here we are at the end of the day. We've rototilled up the bed or beds, removed all the big shrubs that were here. And now we've got a beautiful palette. We did a little pruning, shaping up those yopon and these azaleas a little bit. And we're going to leave these... Nandina here. Linda likes them. But I'm going to show you this design that I came up with for this and for down below. Did a little pruning on the uh, inkberry, a uh, laura petalum, and a cleara japonica. And we've also got a red twig dogwood. We got some sedums here that are probably going to come out. But I think they'll wilt if we do. We've got plants coming in. All right, folks, end of the day, I'm done. Y'all have a great one. We'll see you soon. All right, folks, Tommy Coward here on the lawn. Beautiful day here in Oak Ridge, really, Kernersville. You call it Kerners Ridge or Oakville. But, folks, we're, here we are on the site of a landscape installation that is uh, shade for the most part. These little flags here are where the plants are going. And we've got a two tier. Some of the things are going in up here on top and then we've prepped for down below. And I'll show you some of this plant material that we've put into the design. The number one thing we're using for shade is the use Cephalotaxis. And these are the standard upright U. And we're going to mix and match them with the uh, Prostrata U, the lower growing. We've got some Encore Ever Blooming Azaleas. This is Autumn Embers. And got another one up here called, where are they? Oh, right here, Autumn. This one is Autumn Fire. Red. A couple of those splashed. Another interesting for color is the Euchara, Huchera, some people call it, spelled with an H. Coral bells, that's what these are. Three different colors. We've got a little bit of Uriope, it's an accent plant. We've got some Laura Petalums. That's the Blaze, I believe, or Ruby. Then we've got some Kaleidoscope Abelia going down front. And then one of my favorite plants to work with these days is the uh, Copper Tone uh, Distillium. My favorite of all time, uh, Camellia, is the, uh, they're a red, and this is a Yuletide Camellia. And they'll be going in as foundation plants. Then down front, we have the Cleara Japonica. They'll be accenting some of the distilliums and then the kaleidoscope abelia will be up on top we're going to move a couple of rhododendrons that were cut back that's that roadie right there is about finished up these azaleas are finished up here are the beds down here in the front we've got an inkberry here and the reason we're using some Laura Petalums, this is a full-grown one, and here's a Cleara Japonica and a red tip dogwood. So here's where the plants are going in down here. I hate that crack in the wall, but I don't know if that could be sealed. That's the hillside planting. You can see that. We've got a lot of good uh, soil conditioner. Osmocote fertilizer. The folks are having a yard sale today. It's a neighborhood yard sale. Bring you back up around this way. See some interesting things. 
coming back around. Let's see. All right, I'm going to start laying these things out. One thing I didn't mention was these these ferns, these autumn ferns. They're going to go in under this Japanese maple tree. All right, folks, let's get started. All right, folks, well, here I've got the design on my iPhone. I, this was computer generated design. And I forgot to bring the hard copy with me, so I'm having a look here. But really what I've done is spent some time laying everything out. And uh, I want to take into account this area here. All it's going to take is one camellia. It'll go up about eight feet. And then we've spaced everything accordingly. I don't like packing it in. You can see that spacing here offset caddy corner that type of thing where these big ferns and everything is set up the coral bells here groups of threes three three Here's where I did something interesting. I didn't do, um, did a group two of the, that Encore, the Autumn Fire, side by side with another one. That's going to really provide a lot of red color. And then down here, I did Clara, Clear on either side, and then Distillium in the middle. So you can work with even numbers and still achieve good balance and make it look kind of natural. Down here in the front, On the wall, more coal bell. You know, we've done group of seven, group of seven. There's really five distilliums, five abelia, and then capped on the ends, and then there's three liriope on that end, and then I'm entrance way here with three liriope. I'm gonna move this mondo grass to here in the skinny area and then have a good big spot for that euchre there. These uh, sedums were already here. Moving them right now would be pretty futile. But stand back and see what we've got so far, what that looks like. Uh, I haven't even started planting yet. But uh, let's take a look down here, see what this looks like. And it's going to look like in front of this wall. The idea was to soften that wall. You can see how everything is offset here. Yeah. And up to the house that way. This is what it looks like from the front. You can see that. Everything. This is what we got here. That's what that looks like. A lot of interest, a lot of different textures, a lot of different colors. We left this Nandina here. It's beautiful. All right, folks, let's get planting. All right, folks, planting has begun. Everything's going in, and what I always like to do in these videos is show you something very important. Dig in the hole. When you dig that hole, you do want to dig it so it's quite a bit larger than the root ball on the plant, whether it be a potted plant or a B&B. &B. And then soil conditioning is extremely important. I like to fill that hole with soil conditioning. Pretty much the whole hole, fill it up. Work that in. Work it in, work it up. Work it up to the around the edges, get it good and mixed in. And when that's done, Osmocote fertilizer. And I'll show you how, about how much I like to use in each hole. Just a shaker, but good amount. About three tablespoons probably worth. Okay, work that in. Break the pot, break the plant out of the pot, 
typically it's going to be root bound so what you'll want to do and that means that the plants roots are spiraling around you want to free that just scratch it up a bit this is not ready to plant I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out because I haven't made my finished my hole just want to show you that you just scratch the, the edge of the root ball plant it tamp it as you can see I'm trying to make like a packing it down and making kind of like a, a water well and I will come back to each one of these and make a nice little water well so that when it gets watered water will sit up in that water well it gets harder to do as you're on a slope but as you can see these were done that way and that's it all right folks bear with me all right folks Tommy Coward here what the hell just happened Damn. all right folks we're back and it's another weekend it looks like it's trying to rain us out but today we're just doing some mulching basically brown mulch earth grow good stuff just want to go back over this with you so everything's had about a week to just perk and live and everything looks really really happy a lot of new growth i love when you get all that new tender growth on these uh, and actually we've seen quite a bit of growth in the last few days on the uh Prostrata use, but uh, the um, I'm really pleased to see the uh, Euchara is taking hold real well. It's not wilting, anything like that. Everything looks really happy. Everything down below is really good and happy. Everything's happy, 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 happy. Today we're gonna definitely uh, work on moving some um, rhododendrons that were actually sprayed with Roundup a couple of years ago. They tried to kill them. Um, they're underneath there. So we'll, we'll uh, underneath that big rhododendron, same variety, we're gonna place them down here where I've already rototilled up some holes for them. It's raining, but it feels great, folks. Oh, looks like Jack had a couple trees taken out this week. Look at that. Oh, wow. Hey, all these trees are gonna eventually go. All right, folks. All right, folks. Nothing like some nice mulch. And you see these stones? I sit around here as a little accent, some coins. But this is the finished product. We're getting a nice little rain right now. Hope new growth on these views. Look at this. Really, the uh, that dark mulch. Look at Coral Bell. Oh, that's the, uh, the color of those uh, Encore Azaleas. Got a lot more mulch, but uh, hey, it's starting to rain really hard today. So I think I'm just going to wrap it up for now. Come back tomorrow. Finish the job up. This is really coming along good. I got to bunch more mulch down there and some edging to do we'll do that tomorrow all right folks we are finished up I'll show you what this looks like from bottom to top mulches in we brought in a new clematis vine and it's covering a crack in the wall, which I pointed out earlier in the video. It's perfect for right there. Might like a little more sun. These were some of the existing plants. Laura petalums and the abelia and the distilliums kind of tie in what we did on the hillside a few years ago. Some clearas. There was already a cleara. Some more distilliums, the clear inkberry, and we got some camellias here. This is all shade. There's my rake. I just moved some uh, rhododendron, some sizable rhododendron, down to the front that were tucked back in behind this rhododendron. You can see what we got now. 
this is the I'm getting a little bit of what appears to be fungal or maybe too much water on these two camellias the other ones don't have it encore azalea euchara more yews I love the yews Cephalotaxis, both the prostrata short one and the tall one. Mixing and matching them. Alright folks. This is the tour. Looks like. End of the day, folks. I got some mulch though to do next week. It's Mother's Day. We're gonna go see Mama. Alright folks. Signing out.